um, changing the choice of law for them. In other words, get away from their Roman cult law and then be judged on the covenant, our covenant, and positive law. What do you think about that? Well, you're talking about applying for a change of venue, aren't you? Oh, it's not really venue. It's a choice of law, law forum. Yep. Yep. I think it's an excellent point. Well, well, what you're what you're raising is something that that there is a there are not just hundreds but thousands and thousands of um, citations that can be used. Where, for example, uh, members of the Jewish community have successfully changed the form of law based on their belief and other other um, groups as well, Amish and so on. So I would say to you that is a, an excellent suggestion. The only thing for that is there needs to have been constituted communities for that in order to deal with a, a, a physical community on the ground. And so it, it's really a question of timing to be able to do that. Once you have a community on the ground constituted subject to the jurisdictions and the laws of the whole society, then I would absolutely concur that they are the kind of things that you pursue. Until then, it's a bit dangerous because those things are not in place. Yes? I see. Good point, though. Yeah, it might work. It will work. It works for others. Well, it would be considered a change of venue when you change uh, law forms. So it would be really considered a change of venue um, and a change of jurisdiction. But that would have to be done after the community is established and has its charters. Right. Correct? Absolutely. Was, I mean, yeah, go ahead. There was a, a news article a couple of days ago about a judge that actually used Sharia law in a dispute between uh, two Muslims down in um, Florida. That's what I kind of thought about, you know. But, you know, our society well, is rather large. I mean, we don't have to live in the same little community. I mean, it's a worldwide organization. That's, that's correct. But it, where, before you do that, you need to have um, a body. I mean, you need to have the people in positions. I mean, while, while a judge... Obviously, the parties agreed to the judge to be able to, to to apply Sharia law in that context, so the judge effectively changed the form of law of the court and did it that way. Um, you, you still, we still need to we still need to have the communities established and and constituted before I believe we can effectively pursue that remedy. It's a, it's important. It shows the power of the community. I mean, the communities in America, by the way have the power of a grand jury. So there's going to be a lot of, of strength of communities. But we're not there yet. And, and for people right now facing real issues, the great strength is at least finding someone, if not themselves, to use the executive approach. Yeah? Okay. But again, I appreciate the thinking, Ron. Sure. Thank you, Ron. Okay, bye. All right, next, next question. Bye. Talk to you soon, Ron. All right, next question on the phone lines. We have Truth Matters. Are you there? I think they're still muted. Truth Matters, can you hear us? Are you there? Yeah, I can see the little red X that says that maybe they're not unmuted yet. Looks like it. All right, well, real quick, let's get to the chat here while I see if I can get them unmuted. Um, let's see. Could you explain a little bit more about uh, the judges knowing how to get around the um, presenting the living man in yourself as the living man in the court a little bit? Do you have anything else that you can say about that? Well, I'm going to get that document up. I mean, anything, any research that people gratefully send to us will definitely get up on the university site because that's why it's called the university site. And, and what, what it, there's, there's three things that this document did. The first is it identified a group of people and ad identified them as, as effectively a, re a rebellious group. And what it identified was people who 
uh, subscribing to what you know is called free man or sovereign issues. The second is it presupposed that um, the judges could um, identify particular uh, approaches in the court and automatically apply a bias, which under their law, under their rules, is unlawful, but they're still doing it. Apply a a a, a, a bias, and then consider that that those people are, are are behaving unlawfully. And the third, it then justified the judge on that bias, without it even being tested as being true or false in the particular matter, that the judge could then apply um, such force as um, remanding them or, or considering that if they speak that it, it, they leave the court return and then apply as a, a court of record that uh, they charge them with contempt. So that's the, that's the feeling I got from these notes. Now as to the specific nature of these notes, I leave it up to people who read it and then comment on the forums of University of Decatur. But obviously it is an example it is a real example, a real document circulated in, in this case in the courts of America that show the courts now think nothing of judges coming with a bias and a prejudice against the defendant without those biases or prejudices having been borne out of fact. But that shows you how far the, the, the courts have corrupted. So I leave it up to you guys to read it and review it. And, um, yeah, comment on the forums. Great. Thank you for that, Frank. Um, earlier on, a few weeks ago, we had talked about the 98 EIN number um, for the trust. And I, I believe that might have been part of the, the earlier question. And we're getting to another question similar to that uh, on the chat here. Uh, regarding obtaining the EIN number that, that starts with 98, and is there a benefit still to that, or are we still even trying to do that? Well, there, there is there is a benefit in the sense that 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 if you are skating on the edge of putting one foot in their society and one foot in our society, that having an EIN number gives you a a portal to engage in commerce back into their society as a trust and people who are outside of the states in the different campus have been getting their EINs of late through through uh, following the methods that are still listed on the Eucadia on one and heaven website but as I've said spending too much time going down these rabbit holes at the end of the day is not central to what we're doing. What we're what we're what we're doing, and what we're seeking to do for everybody, is perfect your standing as a uh, as the trustee of a true trust outside the jurisdiction of the Roman cult. So, what I the reason we've stopped promoting the obtaining of the EINs is that it was detracting from the learning and these other things we're doing. And at the end of the day, as I said with the money system, at the end of the day, we don't want to be supporting their banks anyway. So why would we want to keep trading their money? If our money works as public money and private money, which it does, and we will support it by our communities and support it by law and, and, and uh, defending it, why do we want to keep promoting their system? So, yes, the answer is, is there a benefit in the EIN? Well, the jury's out, but some would say yes, if you've got one foot in one in each camp. Um, are we supporting it? No, we're not adding to the information at the moment. It's there. Have people got them through Eucadia? Yes, they have. Yes, uh, thank you, Frank. There have been a few that have gotten them. It seems, though, that in the States it's been a little bit difficult after about one or two folks might have gotten them. Um, and it might be a, a difference in the way the form was filled out, very possible. Yeah. Yes. Um, all right. Um, 
the board here is locked up for being able to unmute folks. And I see that truth matters in a better way. You might be able to get on the chat and ask your questions real quick for us. Um, so a question here from the chat is, uh, Frank, do you have to register your business to get an ID number or can you use your personal ID for your business? And I'm not sure if you're a uh, truth seeker, if you're talking about uh, having a business within Eucadia once you have your live born record. Uh, so Frank, you might understand that question a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Look, um, there are different types of trusts in Eucadia, just as there are different types of trusts in the Roman system. And one of those trusts is called a merchant trust. And when we get uh, the money system on what uh, your true trust, dealing with your flesh, and then the superior trust, dealing with a different property that you have, is separate to your merchant trust. And so the short answer is yes, we'll be making available to everyone, those that want to register a merchant relationship into Eucadia, and a separate trust ID will be uh, obtained through that process. So um, the, go and have a look at what a merchant is under positive law, and you'll see the definitions there, and that's essentially what we're saying. So, yeah, and the differences between the two, please go and have a look at positive law on one-heaven.org and go and have a look at, at that, and it should make it clear for you. Okay? Uh, great. Thank, thank you, Frank. There was a question earlier regarding the uh, covenant uh, where the Treaty of Lucifer used to be. Um, someone was asking, were there changes made there? Is that still, and is that still included? Or uh, what has happened to um, I, I would, yeah, Article 47? Good question. I'm, I'm glad the question was asked because it, it, it gives me a chance just to, to clarify the changes are not finished and they will be finished in the next day. But the the couple of things, okay, the, so it's not finished, it will be changed and and so uh, the Treaty of the Divine Masculine, the Divine Feminine and the Divine Messengers comes into that area and the approach in terms of the Treaty of Lucifer will be modified. What will be clearer is the following. Any deity that the existing elite families claim their power from is and will be clearly identified as a signatory to the covenant. What is being modified is that we are approaching this or I'm approaching this maturely in avoiding what is the stereotypical type of wording and approach that people would say, oh, these people are Luciferian or this is a Jesuit thing or this is satanic. And because of the way it was done, it, it, and it doesn't need to be this way, the conveyance of property and rights do not need to be so controversial and it was really for me in reflection of people with great faith who were open to strengthening their faith and change it was a constant rubbing the wrong way and I that's why I made the unreserved apology that was never the intention of it so it's not finished yet but it will be in the next 24 48 hours All right, great. Thank you, Frank. Um, let's see. There was a question regarding... Uh, let's see, I just lost my board. Gee. That's all right. I've, I've got questions here, um, Terry, ones we haven't yeah. covered. Do you want me to cover them? But I thank you, Terry. Yeah, um, yeah let me get back to Yeah. I'll let you go ahead okay. and see if you can... Uh, Catch a couple of those questions while I redo the board and see if I can unmute some folks again. All right. Okay. Right. Yeah, very good. Okay, here we go. Um, uh, Mortel says, uh, you mentioned about bankruptcy. I'm a bankrupt. Can I use my bankruptcy to discharge my fines from the SDRO? 
Uh, Motel, if you're still on, um, we're still working through the...